game easily. BTB, who's feeling the same? Everything that we speak is building a flame. It sparks from the beat, so remember the name from the bars that we bring. Who's killing the game easily? BTB, who's feeling the same? All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Bring the Bars podcast. As always, I'm your host, Casey, a.k.a. King Canada. And today I'm joined by event MC, promoter, hip-hop artist, host of Kicking It Live with Willie. Here we are with Willie Scandals. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. It's nice to finally be here because, like, for those that watch this on the regular, they know that it's uh, you got to win the wheel. Yeah. And I've been in quite a few wheels and I haven't won shit till now. <laughs> it's funny so, yeah. how it works because you were talking about the wheel before this last one and then you won it. And that's how right. we get new people to like, I haven't fucking won the wheel yet. <laughs> then it spins and there you go. <laughs> no, it's 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 a great format, right? It, it, it gives everybody equal opportunity. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, some people just have a bigger horseshoe stuck up inside them and they get two, three, four wins in a row at type stuff. And, and that just happens. You know, that's part of the luck. Yeah, and what I try to do also with the wheel is to, if you won it the week before, even if you're a number one interaction in the group, you're not on the next week one, just to make it so everybody else gets a shot at it, you know? Right, right, right. I wasn't directly uh, speaking about your your interview show, but I just no, mean, I know in, that. In, in general, in the wheels, right? Like, some people just got it, man. Like, it's... <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> just lucky. And I want to kick this off. And yes, pun intended, because I think we linked up from finding out about uh, kicking it live with Willie. So I just want you right now to plug your show, where people can find it, what's it about, and what time it airs. All right, well, kicking it live with Willie is uh, a stream that we do live on Twitch every single Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, The show is basically about showcasing us, the independent artists that are out here trying to hustle as hard as the majors. Um, The way I see it is the indie scene, is the major way you know what i mean so i support the the shit out of all of us guys and gals and uh you know and uh two spirits and all of that you know whoever's doing music and wants to excel in in, in another direction rather than rather than just being a pop star you know because i mean like pop stars are kind of annoying in the end you know so (laughs) i'd prefer to like just stick around with us you know underground dwellers and, and and try to make giant moves as if we were the majors you know so that's what kicking it live is. It's making the regular artist out there. It's in the underground scene feel special, you know, yeah. and, the, and the same goes for the kicking it live concert series. You know, like I, I try to, I try to um, make people feel like headliners. You know what I mean? Cause like a lot of times in, in the local scene, you feel unappreciated. You know what I mean? Like yeah. oh, they, they gave me 10 minutes, dude, you realize I could do four hours worth of performance. Like, why are you giving me 10 minutes? So <laughs> This, these are the kind of things, like, if, if you really watch Kicking It Live with Willie on a regular basis, you'll know that I do a segment where I play your full album, your full yep. mixtape, or your EP, whatever it may be. So, therefore, that's me saying, here, artist, let's get all my scandalizers to love your stuff, you know? And what I love about it is you get these, all these types of shows are popping up, especially when the right. pandemic hit, right. and these review shows, and it's charged to skip the line, or pay ten dollars to skip and get you don't do that if you send an album you run it and that's what i love i mean a lot of times i do have a i do have a list of albums and i do have a long list of singles that were sent but i mean you know you know how it is man you you skip the line if you stay loyal to me you know what i mean like like for you guys at bring the bars right a lot of you guys stay inside my circle so you're constantly in my algorithms and all of that so like there's a special bond there, right? So I'm going to put you guys a little bit ahead of other people and stuff like that. And it, I mean, hey, it's 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 a partnership in this world, right? The more bridges yeah. we build, the more chances we have to reach the successes we're aiming for. Especially yeah, as indie artists. And right. There's not as much branching out possibilities and to get these kind of platforms, whether it be 10 to 1,000 listeners, every listener right. helps. Every single day is another day to earn a fan, right? And for kicking it live, like, what's your favorite part about doing the show and your least favorite part about doing kicking it live? <laughs> uh, my favorite part really is is watching the viewers accumulate. Because, like, we have a ticker I, that I could see. I don't, I don't put it on my screen for you guys yeah. to see, but, but I put it on my side, and it just climbs. And every week, it just seems to get bigger and bigger. And, uh, you know, the least favorite part is that... Uh, I do it on Friday nights. 
(laughs) (laughs) Takes over the Friday. Right. I mean, but, uh, you know, like, if you really followed Willie Scandals and my music and everything, uh, from from my debut album, I had a song called Friday Nights, right? And uh, for us out here in our scene, Friday Nights was always our big night. We're going to get together. We're going to get some bottles. We're going to get some blunts. We're going to record some music. And next thing you know, the door opens and it's Sunday morning. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like friday night for me is the, the creative night you know that between the hours of uh 8 p.m and 5 a.m man that's that's my hours you know mm. i have a regular day job i have children i have a wife i have yeah. the life that everybody else has to go through i'm not seriously an artist all day long like <laughs> people think you know like it's a great illusion but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh you know we still got to pay the bills we still got to do all them good things that oh. humans have to do in this world you know but um like I said, man, Friday nights is just the night, man. I, I am Mr. Friday night, so they say, right? It, I didn't coin myself that. It, it was passed down. They're like, man, I spent my Fridays with you, Mr. Friday night. And I'm like, all right, cool, man. But um, real life is going to happen again soon, and I'm going to be on the road again soon. And Friday night streams will probably non be non-existent because, like, if the road gets as vigorous as I think it might, I won't be uh, that available, you know what I mean, to be doing these kind of shows. I'll be out there doing real shows on real stages in front mm. of real people. And and that is that is the ultimate goal, right, is to always be moving on the road. Well, what's like, nice about, like you said, the Friday night, bringing everyone together is just watching you and kicking it live. Like, you're having a blast. You can tell you're having fun and you're bringing the fun to everybody else. Everybody, right. you know, burn a blunt and have a drink. You always ask what everybody's puffing on, what they're drinking on. And just enjoy the music and you kind of bring the party to people's houses, especially during the pandemic when no one was able to do anything. (laughs) Yeah, well, the the, the opening segment of the show is called Burn to Some Bangers, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I created that segment was because I remember before the pandemic where like, whoa, I just got the brand new DMX album or or whoever, whatever, insert artist. We'll just say DMX today because I love DMX. So I got the brand new DMX album and uh, all the boys are coming over. We're throwing it inside the CD player or on the record player or wherever it may be, the turntable, wherever it may be. We're putting it on there. We're going to listen to it front to back and we're going to burn to some bangers. I was like, holy smokes, we could do this still digitally over the internet. All right, everybody, get your weed together. Get your smokables, your Mm -hmm. edibles, whatever it is. Get it all together. And we're going to listen to this album together and get baked. And then... It makes the rest of the show that much more interesting now because we're all feeling the same vibe together, right? Yeah. And then we move on to hip hop history. Then we move on to backpack pickers. You know what I mean? So it's to me, it's a, a great way to um, break the ice to say, right? Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. Like, I'm going to put uh, your email in the description below when this gets posted. Anybody who wants to send music, albums, right. like you said, you run it all. Yep. Uh, and, and like you said, it's just a camaraderie that seems to have been lost more in kind of the big internet age the cell phone age of everybody getting together listening to an album right, right. and this is what it feels like so it's all it's a really fun show and you're a great host at it i gotta give you your props where it's due thank and you, thank you. besides host you do a lot of other stuff i want to talk about you as an artist as well right. uh what first got you into hip-hop and made you want to write and record that first track um What really, really got me into hip hop was, we just said the name a few minutes ago, DMX, right? Like, um, I was already into hip hop. I was already doing graffiti. I was already doing break dance and I was already doing a few other elements, you know, but at the time I was doing an MC course. This is 1997 going into 1998. I was doing an MC course. And uh, at that moment I was learning compensating compounds, you know, open compounds, You know, if you really rap, you know what this shit means. Mm -hmm. But um, so this is the level I was at at that point, right? Like, all right, you're going to learn how to break, break the mold, fake the cold, you know? So now you're going to learn these. And at the exact time I was learning this lesson, it's dark and hell is hot came out and he was doing that all in that album. And I was like, whoa, (laughs) I could do this professionally. You know what I mean? So like. I was listening to that that album, It's Dark and Hell is Hot, and I was able to predict the words that were coming next because I was doing the compensating compounds and the yeah. open compounds and all of this. So I was like, holy smokes, I know what's coming next. You know, it's dark and hell is hot. And you know, like, you, you know what's coming, you know? So 
bang, holy smoke. Yeah, I could do this. And and that's what it really came down to was that 1998, the, the last year of the golden era, I would say, um, that yeah. really, really, really sparked my interest in grabbing the microphone. Like I said, I was always involved in hip hop. Like since 1986, when I heard LL Cool J's radio, that was the one that sold me. Um, I was under 10 years old at the time. And I was like, this is it, man. I need to put a boom box on my shoulder and walk down the street. <laughs> yeah. you know? So that's where we were at in the eighties out in my region. And then obviously into the, the later nineties is when it truly, truly, you know, yeah, really, I, hit, I hit that mark and I was like, it's time. Let's go. Let's get, let's get the microphone. Let's get the studio. Let's, you know, and, and, and we did. And it's funny you say with like hip hop in general, cause a lot of, especially not to rip on newer artists, but a lot of people wouldn't know that incorporated in hip hop is break dancing, graffiti. It's not just being a rapper, right? So it's right. like be involved into the culture. And a lot of people don't, they just figure, oh, I'm a rapper, but it's one thing to be involved <laughs> in the culture for sure. And well, um, do you it's, remember it's the speaking first... the language, right? Yeah. It's to speak the language, to speak the language, to know the culture. As, yeah. as you may know, I'm indigenous too, right? And, and and my people have lost their language and we're regaining our language now. So for me, knowing this as a young child, I'm like, man, hip hop is the only language I know. You know, so here I am today in, in my early 40s and I'm still teaching the youth about the culture of hip hop. You know, you, you yeah, might, you might, you might, you might think that a lot of these youth don't know about those elements, but man, they're well aware. They just don't practice the elements. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, it's true, for sure. And the for very first song you, you recorded, I like hearing these stories from people because a lot of people, you know, record on a shitty mic or grab a, <laughs> an old cassette and they just record over right. it, one take. What was your very first recording like? And do you even remember the first song you ever recorded? Yeah, of course. Of course, you have to remember these kind of things, man. It's like, it's your legacy, man. It's like your uh, your bucket list, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, um. I don't know if you guys remember the ice storm of 1998. Yep. Especially right. at the back. <laughs> right. We, we got hit pretty heavy in my region. Yep. And um, so what we did is we had a karaoke machine and we had a tape player. We crossed them. Dude, don't ask me how they did this. I, I, pff, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still the, the least engineer of the gang, you know? Like, so <laughs> when it comes to all the hooking up stuff, I'm like, I'm going smoke over here. You guys take care of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, uh, we, we had a karaoke machine that had two tape decks and we had a tape deck that had two tape decks and we were doing pause tapes. So we're pausing the segments of, of the beats and yeah. recording them here and then looping it. Right. Bang, 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 bang. So now we would take, we would take what is an intro on an instrumental on tape and we'd make that two minutes. So now we got two minutes of uh, let's say uh, the alcoholics, hip hop drunkies, because that was a 1998 album. Right. So we take that and we, uh, oh, 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 you hear the old dirty bastard in there, right? And then we loop that section. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so now we got this two minute segment of, of uh, hip hop drunkies. And uh, the first song we ever recorded was called Your Girl Means A Lot To Me. So basically we were talking about other people's girlfriends meaning a lot to us as if we were the boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> and uh it was it was two mcs myself and juggernaut and we went back and forth on some eight bars each bah, 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 bah. and uh to this day we still perform the song occasionally you know like uh it, it's just one of those ones where it's like we look at one another and we're like yeah it's if we're both here we might as well both perform this song right and uh to this day man people are like your girl means a lot to me man play that one it's never been professionally recorded it's on this karaoke machine. Oh, to make it even better, this karaoke machine didn't have a mic. So we, <laughs> so we took the headphone from Game Boy. If you guys remember Game Boy headphones, <laughs> we took those and split them, used one as a headphone and the other one as a mic. <laughs> and uh, to make the story more interesting, it was during the ice storm of 1998. So there was no electricity. We were running off D batteries on both the karaoke and the radio. So you can just imagine how expensive this small recording session became. <laughs> D batteries ain't cheap, man. <laughs> you guys made use out of that ice storm, man. <laughs> oh, man, for sure. We had a hell of a time, man. I, I was 18 years old that year, man. So imagine your parents are just giving you all the freedom in the world, you know? Yeah. I did whatever I wanted. It's nice did that first song, too. It's just such a fun time when you finally 
get it out there and release it and it's crazy yeah, we didn't one, do that <laughs> you're one of the only ones i've heard who will actually still perform their original song because a lot of people we grow over the years as well right. and get better and you look back at that first track and you're like oh shit man that wasn't that great but you know? well, well clearly the song has evolved yeah. <laughs> we usually do it over like whatever is a hot beat today too right so like yeah whatever the hottest beat is out right now if we had a show tomorrow it would be over that beat and fast forwarding to now pretty much uh this will be in the description as well you're on Bandcamp. you have welcome to willy world right uh, incredible album how did that whole concept of that album come about and how was it working on it and if people were to go purchase the album what can they expect from that hip-hop album Ah uh, man the process was a long process in the making. I started the project in 2010. Wow. And I finished it in 2017. So it was a, a good seven years, maybe six years, let's say, and then a year to mix master and, you know, make the track listing and then the album art and all the, the fine things that go along with releasing the album. But uh, the thing that a lot of people don't understand is in 2017, I had one of my biggest uh, years, uh, years of my life. I released three albums that year. I did Welcome to Willy World, which was my debut solo album on BME. I did um, the Beat Vandals, the album. That's my group that we, uh, we formerly had. And then I did a, a third album with uh, Critical titled The Lifers, LifeWise. Um, so in 2017, man, we were working. We had two labs at the time. So we were back and forth between the two labs. Um, the, um, the concept of the album was let everybody know who the fuck Willie Scandals is, right? So yeah. the best way to do that was to purposely put each song in, in storytelling form. So this way, as you're going through, you're getting to know who the fuck the artist is, right? Because a lot of times it's like, yo, I make money. I smoke joints. I do that. Th th and no one cares, <laughs> dude. Tell yeah. me a story, man. Like, who are you? What have you experienced? You know, like, yeah. So as it went along, like I said, it was a six year process. So a lot of the times there was songs where, all right, this didn't make the cut. You know, this does not fit the mold, you know, them. And that's the reason why I came out with three albums that year is because like now here's one song and I didn't get a second verse or a chorus. Uh, damn, I, I, I'm not motivated to do this one. You know what I mean? So put it on the shelf. And then all of a sudden I met with the beat van. I was all right, I met with Critical and we're like, Oh yeah, I got this recording. Check this one out, you know. And then, oh, I love the beat. I love the lyrics. Oh, let me do something on that, you know. And then, next thing you know, three albums came out that year because there was so much projects, so many projects that were unfinished for the Welcome to Willy World uh, album. And uh, you know, like I said, man, it's just a a long process that if you really want to work on who you are as an artist, that's the way you got to do a debut album. Is you got to give them everything about yourself. Yeah, you got to let your listener know who they're dealing with. I mean, if you go back to Nas Illmatic, if you go back to Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt, if you go back to um, Boogie Down Productions, uh, All Means Necessary, you know, these are albums that are going to be with you for life. Yeah. Because you found out who superstars were. You found out about their lives, their existence, their, their everyday rituals and all of these kind of things, right? So that was my approach on that one, man. And uh, it, was, it was quite the experience. It was the journey that I was looking for. It was uh, clarity. Um, we're currently in 2022 and I haven't put out a second album yet. So hmm, who knows what's happening over here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait for when that happens. And you nailed it on the head with um, like all the people that would rap about bitches, monies, cars, blunts. It gets old and no one can rap about your life but you. And that's right. what separates everybody. Like what would we'll, we'll separate you from the pack? I can't rap about your life. You can't rap about mine. It's just. That's no. what you have to get the people hooked on. The imaginary lifestyle is easy to rap about. We can all yeah. do it. Look out the window. Everybody's got fancy shit. It's just like, <laughs> need to brag about it? Seriously, it's like, it's it's common. It's not yeah. worth bragging about. <laughs> and you mentioned it quickly there when you were talking about it, but BME Media. Right. So uh, a lot of people wouldn't know what that is. Who's involved with BME Media? How long has this been going on? And what's your uh, tie with BME Media? All right. Well, BME Media is an independent uh, record label where I have a distro, uh, I have a production deal through them, right? So I get all my beats through the record label. Oh, um, nice. They get they get the um, they get the online sales. I get the physical copy sales. That's the deal that we made between each other. So anything online, 
straight back to them because I mean, free beats, man. <laughs> that could cost you thousands of dollars if uh, a bunch, man. And just the right. promotion itself is just worth it. All right. So uh, independent record label. Currently, we're standing at five, uh, five members. At one point, we were like 15. Um, not that it's a bad thing. It's just sometimes you got to like cut the fat away, you know, and sometimes yeah. sometimes people have other things to do in life, uh, you know, babies, marriage, jobs that bring them other places in the world, you know, so it, sometimes it's just out of your hands how the members could uh, disappear, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, right now we have Too Bad, myself, Willie Scandals, um, Seab Dread, Landson, the good MC, and uh, Golden Grams, another producer. And uh, we have a country folk singer by the name of... Um, man shit am i doing this right now in a live interview <laughs> paul wiggins sorry i got it but uh yeah so right now we're currently sitting at those members and uh i think it's it's the most solid we've been in the the 12 12 years that i've been a part of this wow. um it seems that it seems that uh we have the right direction right now um too bad just went through heart surgery so we're gonna take a little break while he uh recuperates from all of that they say it could take up to six months to fully recover from such a sort of surgery. Yeah. So we're going to let him recuperate. We're going to take care of the reins right now. Um, we're trying our best to do a BME compilation album or a BME tour. One of the two is in the works right now. One of the two will actually happen. <laughs> it's just, you know, we're, we're all different provinces. We're in different parts of the country and yeah, it's really hard to utilize and, um, and uh, roll out together, right? When you're that far apart. So we're going to do I hear our you best. on that one, man. <laughs> we're going to do it. Oh, yeah, man. Bring the bars is exactly that, right? Like yeah. you guys are scattered across the map. <laughs> we got an artist from Africa with Ross Jill on the costume. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you know, you know, the, you know, the grind of being in a group that's uh, worldwide. Yeah. And like you said, one of the hardest things is just getting everybody together. Yeah. to work on uh, if it's a solo even just a single or something you want a bunch of features on it's to get Definitely. everybody's time like you said wife kids birthdays deaths and family heart surgery with too bad right hearts out to him so basically uh yeah yeah for sure for sure for sure shout outs to too bad but uh basically what bme is it's an independent record label that supports us the same way i said earlier about uh what kicking it live stands for that's pretty much the unit we have with bme is that we're all here to do this together we're all yeah. going to help one another climb the next rundle to the top of the ladder and we're going to keep it rolling yeah man it's a good good 12 years too man that's, that's awesome I, right. my, ours is just starting 12 years in um another thing as well i think it's at the end of this month i keep seeing you post you have a big presence on social media you yeah. find them willie scandals on there but um the indigenous cannabis cup Right. I believe that's at the end of the month. And this is a yearly thing, I believe you do. Yeah. Uh, is this an online thing, a performance? Let everybody know about the Indigenous Cannabis Cup. That's uh, in life, in real life event. Um, it's in Tayananega, Mohawk Territory, which is uh, about 25 minutes past Kingston, Ontario. Um, it's an annual event. We're going on uh, the fifth year this year. Uh, for the first Four years, I was the event MC for the whole entire weekend. This year, they decided to change up the format a little bit, and I'm only doing the Sunday. They have another host for the Saturday. Okay. <clears throat> this year's on uh, July 30th and 31st. Um, start. It starts at like 11 in the morning, runs to like 10 at night each day. There's performances, there's vendors, there's food. And when I say vendors, I mean vendors. <laughs> <laughs> the, all the cannabis dispensaries from across the country, even into the states and all of that, they come down, man. They, um, last year we had 125 vendors, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, we 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 had a hell of a weekend. Um, the year prior to that was the COVID year, so there was like 25 to like 30 vendors. Um, the year before that one was the huge year, right? 2019 was the massive year. We had Naughty by Nature out there. We had Peter Jackson out there. Nice. Um, it was it was a hell of a hell of an event, and 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 we keep building, right? They haven't announced the headliner yet for this year, but I have my suspicions. I think I know who they're gonna bring. <laughs> well, it must have been crazy too. Was that started uh, for audience who may not know from the states or whatever? Weed is legal in Canada, right. but it only happened uh, what was it, 2017, 2018? Uh, whenever whenever true hole came yeah, in yeah 
when you ran it the first year that like we became lead, I don't know if you're running even before that. No. That must have been a huge turnout for vendors just because it's legal now. We can promote it and we can try to get our stuff out. Well, you see, the thing here is that once Canada announced that it's legal, right? All the indigenous communities were like, we have sovereignty already, so we're going to do what we want. So like what you see in your uh, your local dispensary in, in say, Ottawa or, or Montreal is completely different than what you would see at an indigenous dispensary. You could actually touch the product. You could smell it. You could examine it before you buy it. Yeah. The concentrates. There's edibles. There's everything that is not inside the uh, Trudeau stores. Man, I'm telling you, it's an experience. If you get a chance, go out to any one of the indigenous communities close to wherever you're at. If they have a dispensary, go inside there and experience the carnival. <laughs> I would love to try that out, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, they ain't that bad, though, in Ottawa. I'll tell you that. I was out there about three or four weeks ago, and uh, the dispensaries are pretty cool. Quebec shit. Yeah, I'm from the, the North Bay region, which is Ontario, a little further up north. And right. yeah, I've been involved with a couple back in the day with an indigenous... Um, like dispensaries and stuff. Right. My buddy is indigenous. He's Ojibwe, one of right. my best friends. So I got to learn a lot about the culture through him, which you'd invite me to all these things. Right. And everybody would laugh at me because they'd be like, you're, you're the only crazy white boy enough to hang out with all of us. <laughs> there's, all, there's always that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to actually talk to you. This is going to be a first on the Bring the Bars podcast because no one else really follows it. It's not uh, dedicated towards music, but NHL, Toronto Maple Leafs, I know you're a fan. Free agency has been going on. We lost Campbell. I just want your thoughts on what you think the Leafs are doing. Um, They're saving ass right now, and they're doing it in the wrong way. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the New England Patriots, all those great players and all those championship years, you know what they did, right? To make that happen. They took pay cuts. Yeah. The big name. But so what I'm saying is we were stuck with four guys that are uh, complete douchebags, in my opinion. And um, we're never going to get past wherever we can make it with these four guys. And that's yeah. all it comes down to. And the goaltending situation. What is wrong with Shelgren? Yeah, I, I have absolutely loved the kid, man. What is wrong with him? Why is there no confidence over, in him? Because Murray, I I don't know. I'm not going to rip him off before he plays a no, game. No, us, but, can't do that. But come on, like, <laughs> for not even, for probably more money than what Campbell was asking for. Mm, Campbell just signed with the Oilers for like six mil, dude. Yeah, five, five mil, uh, five years or something. Uh, we were offering him five mil, three years, and he took the five-year deal. Yeah, you, yeah, of course, right? But uh, like I said, man, if we, if we can get those four guys to, like, just pass some money around, you know, people like Mikheyev will stick around. People like Bozak would have stayed around. People like Hyman, like Hyman would have stayed around. Like, yes. so many. Komarov, uh, man, I can go on. There's just so many good players in the last little while that I had to walk because of four dudes. Yeah. Exactly. I had to throw the hockey question there. That's I never fun. ran into a fellow Leafs fan, so I had <laughs> to bring it up, uh, let alone a hockey fan, really, for a lot of the people I talk to here. Uh, but to get back to the music, um, what's pretty much coming next for you? You talked about you are working at, well, you hinted towards another album, but you didn't actually officially say it. Yeah. So what's coming next for Willie Scandals? Um, currently, we're on the Back Like We Never Left tour. We start back on the 30th of uh, July. Then we have dates throughout August. We're trying to book September and November because anyone that knows traveling in Canada in those months, like December, January, February is not worth it. I'm not doing it. I'll do all local shows at that point. But um, yeah, man, just booking dates, man. I want to get in as many shows as possible. 2019 was my biggest year for touring. I did 127 events that year. So I'm really trying to break that record um, and, and get back to being that guy on the stage, you know, doing the hosting, doing the booking events and all of that stuff. And uh, yes, I did hint that I'm going to do another album. I actually have two EPs coming out this year. Um, the first one's going to be roughly September. It's titled The Harvest. Um, if you know anything about uh, Mohawk cultures, like we really, really 
believe in the farming aspect of life. I'm not saying that I'm going to be rapping about all these things. It's just the metaphor of the album is like, yeah. here's the harvest, you know, look at my hands. I have a whole bunch of great things for you guys to enjoy, you know, like, so that's going to be the first one. And the second one is coming a little bit later. That's going to be the kicking it live EP. So you're going to expect a lot of what you see and hear on the show, right? A lot of the I'm artists assuming on- that would be a lot of features on kicking it live EP then as well, right? Yeah, right, right, right. You're going to definitely have, uh, you're going to, you're going to, each EP has six tracks. So yeah. on the on the second EP, I'm going to have a feature on every single record, of course, or multiple features. Nice. And then in September is when you're going to see Willie Scandals reach all the platforms. I'm waiting till September when I have both the EPs done and Welcome to Willie World in the wave format. So once that happens, man, like I'm... I'm for the last, like, since this Spotify and iTunes thing started, man, people have been asking me and over and over, how come you're not on there? How come you're not on there? I says because... The way people go now, man, it's... No, I know. I get this. But listen, here's my, my explanation is this. I am not there because I feel that my value is going to go down. That's just my feeling. Get lost in the shuffle. Because now I'm going to get lost in the shuffle, right? Yeah. Hey! or the opposite i haven't been there all this time that they're gonna go nuts and i'm gonna get crazy numbers <laughs> those are the two hopefuls but i just i just feel that uh what i do specifically because a lot of people don't know that i'm more than just a hip-hop artist man it's just mm. you know like it's it's one of my biggest hobbies is rapping right like i really truly enjoy putting together a verse not songs. <laughs> like if you see all the collabs that I've done, every time I did a collab, the verse is phenomenal. Like I crushed that shit, you know. But then Cipher Volume Three, got to give it the shout out. You killed it. Thank you for hopping on that. <laughs> yeah, man. So like for for me, the collabs is like um, it's a competitive thing, right? It's like a tryout. Yeah. If, if we're gonna put nine people on a track, man, I'm gonna give it my all, and 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 you're gonna have no choice but to put me last, and that's it, you know. Like, cause it, to me, it's a competition thing. If you look back to the era I was talking about, the '80s and the '90s when I was coming up, it was a super competitive era, and you had to be dope to be heard. So, that's the that's the mentality I put towards all this stuff, right? And so, in September, when I reach all the platforms that everybody's dying for, I really truly hope that the reaction is the ladder rather than the lost in the shuffle you know yeah i would i'd love to see the numbers go through through the roof skyrocketing and uh that would be amazing but it's like i said it's not it's not my focus kicking it live the shows the hosting the booking the tours Depends, that's yeah. that's where i'm at man you know like that's truly where i'm at i'm an entertainer more than i am a recording artist yeah well you do it all man and uh we're getting to the end of the show. We're running out of time and seeing the time limit here. Word. Uh, before I let you go, this is your chance. Plug anything you want, your Instagram, where your albums are, and just let everybody know where to find you. All right. Well, I am Willie Scandals, W-I-L-L, uppercase E dot S-K-A-N-D-A-L-Z. All you got to do is Google Willie Scandals. You'll find all the socials. I'm on all of them. I just very not active on most. Um, I find it, I find it a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of fucking time, you know, and I, I don't got time. I got, I find you're I pretty active on Facebook when you're not getting banned from Facebook. <laughs> well, Facebook Facebook's easy, right? We've been at it yeah. for a long time. So we know yeah. the ins and outs and shit. So I'm on all of them, um, to find my music. You can go to tribe music.com. You can go to uh, bandcamp.com. You can go to SoundCloud, YouTube on YouTube. There's a playlist called Willie Scandals on YouTube. On there, you'll find everything. The music videos, the singles, the interviews, uh, concert oh, recaps, all of that good things. This will be in there eventually too. Yeah, I'll so, post that in the description. Send me the link of that uh, playlist when we get off and I'll post that in the description for everybody. Right on, right on. So yeah, man, that's basically where it's at, man. And then Twitch. Twitch is, is my spot on Friday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come check it out. Kicking it live with Willie. Uh, the show usually ends with a raid to my boy DJ Eyes Open, uh, one of my DJ friends that I've known since the mid '90s. And uh, if you're if you're a, a real Twitch follower, you know all about the raids. And and sometimes the party can go on till wee hours in the morning if the raids keep going. You know, so if you're a Twitch streamer, reach out to me. I'll raid your channel, man, and we'll keep it going together. 
Perfect, man. Well, thank you very much for coming on. It was fun to talk to you. Congratulations on finally winning the wheel. <laughs> and uh, good to hear a little bit more about your story and your right. upbringing with hip hop. And just thank you very much for taking the time to hop on today. For sure, man. Thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, keep up the good work, dude. You're doing great. Thanks, man. And I'll see you Friday on Kicking It Live. I'll be tuning in. <laughs> Peace out. Take it easy.